Each quantitative reasoning part on the GRE will ask you to answer 20 math-related questions in 35 minutes. That's quite a bit to do. In this lesson, we'll look at some strategies that'll make it easier to solve these questions in a limited amount of time. Let's start with what is known as an even and odd problem. If x is even and y is odd, which of the following must be even? Indicate all possible answers. The answer choices are 2x plus y, x plus 2y, xy, x minus y, and x times y plus 1. Let's quickly and easily solve this by picking numbers. Our first new strategy. When picking numbers, it's important to keep a couple of things in mind. Pick numbers that fit the question and pick easy numbers. Picking numbers that fit the question means that if they ask for an even number, you should pick an even number. And keep in mind that a large number, even if allowed, would be difficult to work with. Pick a small number instead. Rewriting the problem mathematically, we're told that x is even and y is odd. Let's pick easy numbers that fit for x and y. Let's assume that x equals 2 and y equals 3. We're then told to find all answer choices that are even. Now we plug the values we picked for x and y into each answer choice. Picking small numbers comes in handy here. The second, third, and fifth answer choices are even. So we check off the correct answers. Some problems, like the even and odd one we just saw, are more easily done by using the picking numbers strategy. Others are faster to do algebraically, and the rest depend on personal preference. The more you practice, the better an idea you'll have of which strategy works best for which kind of problem. Now let's look at back solving, another strategy that can be used with our problem solving method. Back solving just means starting with the answer choices and working backwards. Let's try our new strategy on a problem. When a number is added to its cube, the result is 68. What's the value of the number? The answer choices are 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Keep in mind that the cube of any number is that number to the third power. First, rewrite the problem mathematically. We have x plus x to the third power equals 68. We're then asked for the value of x. Next, back solve for the answer choice that gives us 68. When we back solve, we need to have a process. You will never have enough time to solve for every option, so we'll try to go over the most time efficient way. Here's a pro tip for you. All numeric answer choices in the quantitative reasoning sections are listed in increasing order. So let's take advantage of this. Step one is to start with the second answer choice. If it's correct, you have the answer. If the input is too large, the answer must be the first answer choice, because the first answer choice is smaller. If the input is too small, that means the first and second answer choices are too small, and you can eliminate them both. Since we can determine if the first and second choices, 2 out of 5, are correct or not, it means we have a 40% chance of finding the answer on the first try. Step 2 is to try the fourth answer choice. If the input is correct, you have the answer. If it's too large, the third answer choice is correct. If it's too small, the answer must be the fifth answer choice. Since step 2 determines which of the remaining three answer choices is correct, we have a 100% chance of finding the answer in only two tries. Testing all five answer choices isn't necessary. Using this method of back solving ensures that you save time, so you have enough time to move on to the rest of the questions. Now let's go back to our problem. Let's try the second answer choice, which is 3. Substituting 3 for x, we get 3 plus 3 cubed, or 27, which is equal to 30. This is too small. Cross out the second answer choice as an option. The correct answer needs to be a larger number, as we need a total of 68. So we can also cross out 2, as this would yield a number smaller than 30. Moving on to step 2, let's try the fourth answer choice, 5. 5 plus 5 cubed equals 130, which is much too large. We need to input a smaller number, so the fourth and fifth answer choices can be eliminated. The only remaining answer is the third answer choice, 4, which we can double check. Not surprisingly, it's correct. Though there are rare exceptions for which the second and fourth answer choice method doesn't work, back solving is a helpful strategy for solving many problems with numeric answer choices on the GRE, especially when you're crunched for time. The more you practice, the better you will get at quickly deciding whether the picking numbers or the back-solving strategy works best to solve the particular problem you are facing. 
And when you have the strategies down, you won't need luck to ace the test.